Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today. It's Tuesday, December 4th, 2012. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. Uh, you can subscribe with your email there. You could also help me out uh, donating. Also on YouTube, uh, my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. All the headlines and links that I'm covering here will be in uh, YouTube's video description. So, we left off with this right here, talking about uh, Guantanamo Bay, saying that um, they're not just looking uh, to create a Guantanamo Bay inside the United States, we've heard this before, but they're actually considering, what, a second Guantanamo Bay, and I left off with what? that in North Carolina, North Carolina guards are actually torturing uh, inmates with hot sauce and forcing them to k uh, kiss snakes and, and all kinds of stuff, stripping nude and pretending to have sex, really degrading stuff. I mean, this is, you know, uh, you know this is uh, getting pretty bad when stuff like that happens as far as society goes. It says here, Amnesty International report calls horrific abuses in South Yemen human rights catastrophe. So, um, pretty interesting, though, because... Um, it says here that this actually happened after the whole Arab Spring. Al-Qaeda militants seized the capital province on the Arabian Sea coast in Yemen while Yemen was mired in the turmoil of a popular uprising against Saleh. The uh, militants or terrorists also took control of several nearby towns. It says Saleh, once a U.S. ally, stepped down in February under a Gulf-mediated U.S.-backed deal. So... But what's interesting there in Yemen was that in southern Yemen, they were actually trying to secede from the other part of the country. And then, of course, you have these Muslim extremists that, um, that come in here and just, uh, just mess the whole thing up. Libya pays extra for food imports as sellers fear disarray. International traders cite growing uncertainty. They're having to pay, Libya is, extra for food imports and traders say some foreign firms are diverting shipments elsewhere due to fears dismayed as unfounded by Tripoli that growing disarray in the country could delay payments. So they got all this money and everything, but people are basically scared to do business uh, in Libya now. So, you see, that's the fallout of these regime changes and opposing these radical extremists. So this anti-Muslim film which sparked the Middle East riots, did they? Or was it, was it, was it, was it Guantanamo Bay and torturing people that had nothing to do with terrorism? Um, was it was it the United States funding terrorism and being uh, the Zionists and Israel's uh, uh, puppet state? Uh, was it uh, all of the embassies and huge bases around the world, including Iraq, one of the biggest in the world, right? Was it was it something like that? Was it the, was it the drone strikes in Pakistan and in Yemen and uh, in other parts, Afghanistan, uh, Somalia? Uh, was it those drone strikes, uh, assassination drone strikes that are supposedly illegal? Is it that that's, that's been sparking the riots and the protests? I think it was a culmination of many things. But um, it says here this anti-Muslim film that sparked the Middle East riots will stay on YouTube after judges dismiss second bid from actors who take it down. So pretty interesting stuff. And you know why this is being done? Because it was done by Zionists. So... They're going to keep it up there as long as it invokes hatred and violence towards them so they could act like they're on the defense when really they're on the attack, covert attack. Egyptian president flees palace as riders close in. So, yeah, pretty, uh, another interesting development. It says here that uh, time for a flashback nearly two years ago when the first Egyptian revolution with great assistance from various governmental liberating agencies of the developed world, of course, zero hedges, hinting at the U.S. and them, led to a democratic regime. So democratic, the ruler lasted all of five months before declaring himself temporary dictator. Finishing up, one wonders just which regime the U.S. will support this time around and what happens if control over the Suez Canal cannot be maintained following what is increasingly shaping as a counter-revolution. Then U.S. NATO-backed terrorists in Syria mass murder unarmed men. So it goes on here, it says, The act of a person who intentionally kills or conspires or attempts to kill or kill whether intentionally or unintentionally in the course of committing any other offense under the subsection of this, uh, this uh, war crime uh, definition, one or more persons taking no active part in hostilities, says here, or any other cause. 
it says here there there's a video here you can check it out previously video appears to show rebels murdering unarmed terrified loyalists gruesome footage emerged showing them executing the loyalists while their victims pleaded for their lives one of the gunmen is heard referencing an al-qaeda link group behind several terrorist attacks in syria Despite this, the West, including the U.S., is still providing steady streams of cash, equipment, weapons, and diplomatic support to the verified terrorists and war criminals. So, yeah, it's like they, you never think about it, but it's a very, uh, it's a pretty slick little tactic. They downplay the atrocities as merely targeting loyalists. Well, you know, uh, it's, you know, when they, when they were blowing up uh, Christians and killing Christians, they just said, oh, you know, they just happened to be civilians, uh, and so when they say they're they're killing loyalists, they're probably just regular killing civilians. Syria says 10 dead in mortar attack on school. A mortar slammed into a ninth grade classroom in Damascus, killing nine students and a teacher. It says here it blamed the attack on terrorists. I love this. This is Fox News. The term the regime uses for rebels who are fighting to topple the government. So even though the director of the education department in Syria says it's a terrorist attack on educational institutions and on students, the, uh, this, um, this uh, Fox News article uh, would like to downplay it as this is like, you know, this isn't like a, a World War II battle um, at the hedgerows in France between the Germans and the U.S. troops, you know what I mean? Uh, this, this was a terrorist attack, you know, this is kind of like, uh, the bombing of uh, Dresden and bombing and bombing and bombing day and night by the British and the U.S. That's terrorism. That's terrorism. But they like to make it seem like it's some kind of uh, uh, combat maneuver when they blow up schools and uh, innocent civilians. But you can see with the article what they're trying to do here because they said, ooh, it says this is uh, comes at a time when the international community is becoming increasingly alarmed about the chemical weapons. And then you skip that paragraph, and it goes on there, and it says that U.S. intelligence has detected signs the regime was moving chemical weapons. NATO secretary, if anybody uses chemical weapons, I would expect an immediate reaction from the international community. Hell, give Turkey Patriot missiles. They got chemical weapons. They're moving them. They're going to use them. His comments echo uh, President Barack Obama, the CEO, as uh, it would be a tragic mistake of deploying chemical weapons. So again, they just they just ram it home. Assad. Then we have Syria TV airs images of dead Lebanese Salafists. So it says that these were uh, the men among 21 Lebanese Salafist fighters who fell into Syrian army ambush on Friday. They fell into an army ambush. Okay, so they were on. They were being attacked. Oh, okay. That 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 straightens it out then. Um, you have Assad army pounds rebel strongholds. At least 25 killed across Syria. It says here Assad forces eliminated scores of rebels calling them terrorists. <laughs> See how they have to do that? Calling them terrorists with ties to Al Qaeda. Well, it's already been admitted by the same fucking sources from the West. Jesus. It's like such a mind fuck, dude. Sorry for my language. It's just I'm sitting here reading this over and over again, and it, it just make you lose your damn mind. Turkey says Syrian regime resembles an armed militia. The Syrian government has degenerated into an armed militia that resorts to brutality in an attempt to stay in power, says Turkey's foreign minister. Again, <laughs> rattle that in your brain for a little while. <laughs> Iraq slams Kurds as troop dispute restarts. So here we go again between the Iraq central government and the Kurds. Less than a week after the deal, the same argument begins anew. So last week, the two are at it again with troops again being sent to back into the area and both sides blame each other for another standoff. So the Kyrgyzstan prime minister accused Maliki of Iraq's Baghdad central government of being paranoid about conspiracies against him while adding that he believes recent Iraqi military efforts to acquire more advanced weapons are primarily about attacking Iraqi Kurdistan and not defending the territory. The dispute between Iraq and the Kurdistan is long standing especially in the oil-rich area around Kirkuk, so it's all about oil distribution. It says, in foiled Jordanian terror plot, officials see hand a resurgent al-Qaeda in Iraq. So, you're saying people that are in Syria um, uh, 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 basically are fighting for the West that killed the American soldiers. The plan was to unleash mayhem across an entire city, bring Amman to its knees, and the words of one security official would start with suicide bombings at shopping malls and um, build a momentum as teams of terrorists blew up cars and raked cafes with machine gun fire. So, 
It goes on here and it says that Al Qaeda's affiliate in Iraq, using the terrorist group's expertise and weapons from Syria's uh, invasion, the plotters plan to rain mortar shells on the American compound and homes nearby. And it's kind of like what they're doing in Syria and Turkey in that. They wanted to kill as many as possible, Muslims and Christians, said a Jordanian government official. Ties to a Salafi movement. They're talking about the Jordanian plot revealed by the kingdom's officials on the 21st of October, described the most ambitious in the country since November 9, 2005, when suicide bombers linked to al-Qaeda in Iraq uh, struck three hotels, killing 60 people. And... Um, Goes on, says in interviews over several days, the Jordanian official said the scheme was hatched during the spring and summer by 11 Jordanians connected to the Salafi movement, an ultra-conservative puritanical uh, sect within Sunni Islam with growing numbers of followers throughout the Middle East. They're real fighters, he said. They were mostly in their 20s, 30s that crossed into Syria multiple times, gaining extensive fighting experience and weapons training. Oh, a hot exercise. Said also, another advantage was easy access to an endless supply of weapons. This is according to the Brookings Institute. This is why it's happening, because it was supposed to. Where arms bound for the rebel fighters arrive daily across the Turkish border. So actually, yeah, they're being fed by the Turkish government as well. Objective, it says here, according to the Jordanian report, was to cause chaos and anarchy and spread fear among the population, setting the stage for further operations to follow. Israel repeatedly asked Jordan to back attack on Syria in past two months. The official says, you know the Israelis, sometimes they want to bomb right away. So besides the November attack by Israel on Iran, it says also Israel had repeatedly approached Jordan about the possibility of attacking Syria. I'm going to move fast here, so stick with me. I'd like to go past 15 minutes, but for both my YouTube accounts, they won't let me. So I have to squeeze it in there. UN calls on Israel to open nuclear program to inspections. The General Assembly has approved a resolution calling on uh, Israel to join the NPT and allow IAEA inspectors. Israel expedites plans to bisect Palestine. They aim to kill Palestinian statehood with new settlement plan, literally uh, uh, cutting it in half, the West Bank in half. Israel demolishes West Bank mosque for the second time in two years. They've also seized $120 million in Palestinian tax money. They say the money will go to a power company. Some have said it's revenge for the successful UN recognition of Palestinian, while others say it's something to do with Iran. Others say it was simply about paying back the power company for debts accrued. Israel is called to explain targeting reporters. They must provide an immediate and detailed explanation for targeting of journalists during the last month's Gaza conflict. Hmm, conflict. Another way to twist the truth. Netanyahu emphasis on war distracts attention from fading Israeli economy. That's right. Also, you have to remember their settlements. Uh, exp expansion, it's to hide that too. In fact, Israel's economic woes provoked massive social protests against Natyana's government during the summer of 2011. Look at this Reuters article, a battleground for weapons of the future. I didn't really believe this when I heard about how Israel tests the weapons on Gazans and innocent Gazans and that. And uh, they, then they approve that. They sell it and market that as a business strategy and say these are battle-tested. So, military and analysts are busily assessing the fighting between Israel and Hamas. Their goal, apply lessons from the eight-day battle to weaponry still in development. Enough to make you want to puke. France and Britain reportedly considering pulling ambassadors from Israel. And according to European diplomats, they say this is, has to do with Jerusalem's expansion of the E1 settlements. This time won't just be condemnation, there will be real action against Israel. Well, we'll Israel to use drones in Azerbaijan for possible Iran strike. Of course, we know Israel has been supplying lots of weapons to Azerbaijan. Of course, Baku denies everything. But remember this, the United States will give Azerbaijan the northern area of Iran in exchange for participation in the war. Another drone down by Iran? They captured an intruding U.S. drone over Persian Gulf waters. Could be propaganda. Who knows? The Scan Eagle drone, the Iranian commander pointed out, are what? Usually launched from large aircraft carriers, which the U.S. does have in that area. Iranians are getting pretty creative here. They've been able to survive with all these sanctions. The dollarless Iranians discover virtual currency. They're talking about, of course, bitcoins. Another reason for Israel's invasion is what? Gaza's offshore gas fields. A new UAE pipeline bypassing the Strait of Hormuz is ensuring oil exports for Asian markets. Obama, not what the Russians want to hear right now. Obama's calling on them uh, to renew a decade, two-decade-old nuclear disarmament pa weapons pact. Globalists are also pushing for an EU-Russia merger. 
Remember, we were cover talking about Russia possibly having a draft for the military. Russian military wants to create a special commando force besides the Spetsnaz. And as the Pentagon is to expand their spy network, overseas, Oklahoma school is training spies for cyberspace. 